tonight, a Port Piri man arrested over the alleged murder of another man at Talawi Beach. And the last minute preps as crowds prepare to descend on Silverton for the Sunsets Music Festival. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. A Port Piri man has been arrested over the murder of a man at Talawi Beach overnight. Officers say the two men are known to one another, with the crime leaving locals shocked. Major crime detectives swarmed the scene at the Talawi Beach campsite around 10.30 last night, after the body of a 49-year-old man was discovered. We allege that an altercation um, is believed to have occurred between the two men sometime prior to the death. 39-year-old Port Piri man Matthew Lolit has been arrested and charged with murder. Police allege he knew the victim, Nuriupta man Rory Elliott, known to family and friends as Megs. It will be alleged that um, the two men were together prior to the death. Locals say this sort of crime is surprising for the area. Uh, it's scary. Fred was thinking about coming down the beach last night because it was so hot. If he did, who knows what would happen. He might have run into them. I'd had a few drinks last night, so I thought well, I was going to come down and then change my mind. Investigations are continuing as police try to piece together exactly what happened on Thursday night. We are conducting what we call a line search. Uh, we have police and personnel from the State Emergency Service working together uh, and they are scouring the, um, the scrubland looking for uh, any additional evidence. Lolita appeared in the Port Adelaide Magistrates Court today via video link and made no application for bail. He'll face court again in Port Augusta in May. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Investigations are continuing into how a man was critically injured in a workplace accident at Port Lincoln. Viterra today suspended operations at the grain facility where the incident took place. Jason Kemp has more. Emergency services undertook a major rescue operation to free a man who was crushed by a pallet of gas bottles here at the Port Lincoln Grain Terminal yesterday. At around 4.30, emergency services scrambled to the terminal on King Street after a delivery worker was crushed, lifting a pallet of gas bottles onto a truck. Workers tried desperately to free the unresponsive man and provide first aid. Firefighters, police and emergency teams then rushed to the scene. Crews eventually freed the man while paramedics performed CPR in front of onlookers, trying desperately to keep him alive. The 50-year-old man was then rushed to the Port Lincoln Hospital in a critical condition. A medivac transfer was then arranged via the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Just after 9pm, the victim was transferred by ambulance to the Port Lincoln Airport where he was met by the awaiting plane. The Flying Doctor Service transported the patient to the Royal Adelaide Hospital a short time later, where he remains in a critical condition. In a statement to Southern Cross News today, Viterra say it has suspended operations in Port Lincoln and offers its thoughts to the man and his family during this difficult time. Investigators are on the scene today trying to piece together exactly what went wrong. A Port Piri man has landed himself in hot water after police allegedly uncovered four cannabis plants growing in his backyard. Officers raided the home just before 7 o'clock last night, acting on a tip-off from the public. The 58-year-old has been summoned to front court. Premier Jay Weatherall says Wyala will be the major winner if a deep seaport is built in the region. He's also committing to more investment in the regional areas, but doesn't believe a royalty scheme proposed by SA Best and the Liberals is needed. It's been long talked about, but a deep sea port in the Upper Spencer Gulf could soon be a reality. While the Liberals remain sceptical, the Premier is adamant it'll go ahead if Labor is successful in March. The Lips privatised the ports back in 2001 uh, and we're going to get back in the business of ports. Private proposals at Cape Hardy and the Wireless Steelworks have seen questions raised about its viability, but discussions with the mining and agriculture industry suggest it's a necessity. We've had great support from the, uh, the mining industry groups and the farming groups who are very keen to partner with us to make this a success. 
Attention will soon turn to a location. The Gulf has a small channel of deep sea water that varies in distance from shore, complicating the issue. Whatever the site, the Premier says Wyala will be the flagship city. We also know that there's a range of industrial land in the Wyala precinct and also space for additional port upgrades. Regional issues look set to shape the election for the first time in generations. SA Best and the Liberals have both outlined royalties for regions policies, siphoning a percentage of funds back into various regional projects. But Labour won't be following, instead opting for a case-by-case -case basis. It's not about the, the size of the resources. It's, we'll invest where the partner says that they want to create jobs. If we can verify that, We'll invest. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. After the break, a boost for Optus Mobile customers across the Lower Air Peninsula, plus Wyala welcomes a new Director of City Growth. We'll tell you what that is next. Two new 4G mobile sites will be built on the Air Peninsula as Optus continues to expand its service in the region. The new towers will provide improved coverage and capacity for locals and visitors in Port Lincoln and for motorists travelling between Port Kenny and Woodna. A third tower in Port Lincoln will also go live in March, providing additional coverage for the, for the region. Port Lincoln will play host to one of the state's biggest conferences this weekend. Nearly a dozen councils from across the Air Peninsula will discuss the latest developments in the region. It's the longest running regional government conference in the state and this weekend Port Lincoln will turn it on for councils from across the region. We need to work together, all us uh, local councils, uh, on behalf of our local communities and this is a really good opportunity. The 81st EPLGA invites discussion on how the EP region is travelling. This week at least two hot topics will be on the agenda. Labor's promise to build a deep sea port in the Spencer Gulf and a new green hydrogen plant to operate near Port Lincoln. Regional Development Australia will also share a new tourism plan to boost the regions. We'll take um, nearly half a day to get a full briefing from RDA on the sorts of uh, economic development strategies that uh, they've been working on. The EPLGA will invite guest speakers to discuss how modern technology is changing city landscapes to bring councils up to speed on latest trends. Speaking to us about smart cities, about connectivity, about what we can do as a community. Mayor Green recently stepped down as president of the EPLGA, but he's still eager to speak on recent funding allocations provided during the lead up to the March state election. We like election years. <laughs> Maybe we should have one every year. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Students in regional communities will soon be able to access university financial support just one year after leaving high school. The amount of time students need to spend earning an income before they're eligible for youth allowance has been reduced from 18 months to 14. Around 3,700 students will be immediately impacted by the change. Community leaders came together in Wyala today to celebrate a major milestone for a tourism body. It came as the local council's newest director of city growth launched her ideas to improve the industry. All the key Wyala stakeholders were in one place this morning, marking a significant anniversary. The local tourism focus group celebrated its first birthday with a presentation from council's newest director of growth. Christina Roberts is only five weeks into the role, but says she's excited about Wyala's future. It's a great opportunity for me to come and uh offer my services and bring my capabilities and be part of, of shaping and transforming Wyala. She believes the key for the city is positioning itself as a stopover as well as a natural attraction hotspot. But whatever it is, it must come from the city's heart. We are not here as a council or a state government or federal to tell people what to do. It has to come from the bottom up. This morning also doubled as a pitch to those running for Giles at the state election. Labor's Eddie Hughes and the Liberal candidate Mark Walsh say they'll both push for an increase in visitors to the region, but say it's dependent on local proposals. We have to work together and people have to be willing to take a, a, a punt and take a, a risk. Drive those, um, those events like your music events and stuff like that. The, the government support them, but it's not up to them to organise them. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. After the break, we'll have all the cricket tips, plus we'll bring you the latest on what's happening this weekend at the Silverton Sunsets Music Festival. That's next.
Female students from Stewart High have spent the week on a schools-based course designed to guide them towards adulthood. The Port Lincoln-based Sister Girls Project is designed to help young females with their decision-making. Students discussed friendship, critical thinking and other life skills that will guide them from now through adulthood. Everyone can see what's going on at the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole heap of things going on underneath that nobody knows. So we shouldn't judge. Each student completing the course also receives 10 SACE points. Broken Hill locals have spotted a doctor riding an elephant in the city's town square today. Well, not quite. A mural of local GP Dr Ramu Nachiapan is being crafted on a wall of his surgery in Crystal Lane. Caricature artist John Hinton is behind the eye-catching piece. He's hoping to have the unique mural completed by the end of next week. Well, the Silverton Sunsets Music Festival is just about to get underway at the iconic Silverton Hotel. Patrick Reinke joins us now from the heart of Mad Max country. Pat, what's happening there? Oh, Fraser, the stage is set here for the first ever Silverton Sunsets Music Festival and everyone is ready for a cracking weekend full of country music. Organisers have been very busy setting up for the event today, with lights going up, chairs being set and most importantly, the beers getting cold. The street in front of the hotel has been shut down for the festival, creating two event areas for the weekend. Out on the street is where revellers will be able to relax and have a drink, but also get close to stage, where the music will be the focus. Focus. While she may also be working hard behind the scenes, country music sensation Catherine Britt will also be taking to the stage tomorrow night, along with a range of other performers including Adam Harvey and John Williamson. If you rock up here, um, make sure you bring cash, it's going to be hard to get everyone in, we'd rather you pre-buy tonight. If you are planning on coming out, please do get your tickets online tonight, but if not we will have them on sale tomorrow for a slightly higher price. Artists are very excited to be a part of it. Yeah, it's really exciting. So exciting that these artists are coming all the way out here and, you know, such amazing artists, artists I've looked up to my whole life. So to, you know, to be on this lineup with them, such iconic Australian artists is incredible. Now, Fraser, the festival kicks off tonight with a country bush dance before a spectacular day planned tomorrow. The first performance will be at midday and the fun won't stop until midnight. Good on you, Pat. Looks like it'll be a great weekend. Thank you, Patrick Reinke in Silverton there. Well, time now for Cricket Tips. Welcome to the last round of Wyler Cricket for the season. Saturday we'll see Central Wyler face Rapina in what will be a prelude to next weekend's prelim final. Rapina will be looking to get some runs to defend with the ball. Centrals again will be looking for their top order batsmen to do all the work. I'm tipping Centrals. Saturday we'll see North Wyler play South Wyler in South's last game for the season. Pat McCarthy will be looking to keep on his good form with the bat, having made over 200 runs this year. David Ackerson will be looking to have a good hit in the middle for Norths. My tip will be Norths. Welcome to this week's Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. The first game sees Southern Air and Waybacks out at Wongaree. Southern Air should be way too strong in this match and get the win. In the next game sees Charlton and Todd River out at Paul Oval. This will be a really good game, second spot up for grabs. Charlton I reckon will just get over the line in this one. And in the final game is definitely match of the round. Tasman's and Lincoln South at Centenary. Lincoln South win this, there's still a chance of playing finals. If Tasman's win, the top four is set. Going to tip Tasman boys in this one. And finally, this weekend we'll see the conclusion of the Henderson Shield. Port Lincoln take on Far West in both matches. The first 11 match being played here in Port Lincoln on Sunday and the second 11 match up at Sejuna as well on Sunday. Going to tip the Port Lincoln sides to get up in both ones, but it should be two really good games. Thanks for listening to the Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. Final uh, minor round of cricket in Broken Hill this weekend. Um, we'll move into the semi-finals next weekend. Central will take on South at the Jubilee Oval. Um, Central in a rich frame of form at the moment and uh, warm favourites for this year's Premiership again. I think they'll be too good for South. The other game at the Alma Oval, West take on North. This is a preview of next week's uh, semi-final, so there'll be a lot of interest in this game. I expect North to actually cause the upset and go in the favourites to take out next week's semi-final. I think their batting has improved significantly and they look to have the goods to topple West. Stay with us. After the break, we'll have all the local weather details with Abby Donaldson. And Abby, it was another hot day around the Gulf. Yes, it was, Fraser, but the good news is a cool change is on its way. I'll have all the details next. 
Welcome back. There was plenty of sunshine out and about for your Friday. It was another scorcher in Port Augusta today. 36 the max there. It was warm in Wyala too and we saw a shower here and there in Port Lincoln. 27 the top and a very hot day in Broken Hill. 37 the top. To the satellite now and cloud over western and southern South Australia with the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Kelvin in WA is producing some light scattered showers but that's mainly over the southeast. Skies are clearer over the northeast with a weak high pressure ridge. On the waters for your Saturday, we'll see southerly winds up to 25 knots, seas at 2 metres with a south-southwesterly swell and sunrise is just after 7. To tomorrow now and taking a look at the conditions for your Saturday. Thankfully it will cool down in Port Augusta. 30 the top, a pleasant 27 degree day in store for Wyala. Those scattered showers will continue in the west. Just 21 the top for Coffin Bay. Another warm day in Broken Hill though and we'll see scattered showers everywhere else as temps drop into the mid-20s. 25 the top for Clare, Cleve and Kadena. Those cooler and cloudy conditions are going to hang around on Sunday. A refreshing 21 the top for Cleve. It's looking like gorgeous uh, Sunday in Woodna though. 27 the top. The sunshine returns for all centres on Monday and it will warm up to 27 the max for Port Lincoln and Cleve. Before the mercury rises back into the 30s for Tuesday, a scorching 37 the top for Woodna. And it's a similar story further up the Gulf. Gorgeous conditions on Sunday, 27 the top for Wyala and Port Augusta. But the mercury rises again on Monday, 33 the top for Port Augusta. Before another scorching day on Tuesday, 37 the top. And lastly, it's looking like much more bearable maximums on Sunday, just 23 the top in Clare. But we will, see, we will still see some lovely sunshine around before a sunny and warmer start to the working week. 31 the top for Port Pirie before a scorcher on Tuesday, sunny and 36 the top. So Fraser, we've got some lovely and refreshing conditions over the weekend before it warms up again to start the week. Good on you, Abby. Thank you. A look at tonight's top stories now. A Port Pirie man has been arrested over the murder of a man at Talawi Beach overnight. Officers say the two men are known to one another, with the crime leaving locals shocked. Investigations are continuing into how a man was critically injured in a workplace accident at Port Lincoln. Viterra today suspended operations at the grain facility where the incident took place. And Premier Jay Weatherall says Wyala will be the major winner if a deep seaport is built in the region. He's also committing to more investment in the regional areas, but doesn't believe a royalty scheme proposed by SA Best and the Liberals is needed. And that's Southern Cross News for the working week. Thanks for your company. Just a reminder, if you've missed any of our bulletins, you can catch up on YouTube. Just look for Southern Cross News SA. They're also on our website, gtsbkn.com.au. You can also keep up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter. I'll have some updates later this evening. Until then, though, enjoy your weekend. Good night.